Hey everybody, this is Dr. Foskey from Arkansas State back with another uh, trombone tip video. A couple of years ago, I posted a short video about slide tube buzzing. Uh, this is sort of an adaptation of the Bill Adam trumpet routine where you pull the main tuning slide out of the trumpet and buzz on the lead pipe. We, we could just buzz on our lead pipe, but for trombone, the, the length of tubing to me is not necessarily as helpful to buzz with. It is helpful but I found something that I think uh, is more derivative of the Adam method, and it allows me to get what I want out of that out of that process. And what I want out of that process is in my middle to low register to respond immediately regardless of the volume. I wanna know that whenever I want the note to come out of the horn, it comes out of the horn, whether it's fortissimo or pianissimo. I want that note to happen when I want it to, not when it's good and ready, not when it's had enough coffee, not when it's limbered up, just whenever I want it to happen. Um, and there have been numerous times in the orchestra where we have super soft, delicate entrances. And I can tell you that this has helped me more often than um, I could probably count. And so it's pretty simple. I start with a D flat in the staff. play a few of them just to get it in my ear and then I remove the outer slide so we're dealing with just the inner slide here and I'm going to play a D flat major scale glist stopping on each note of the scale uh, down to low D flat below the bass clef staff <laughs> And I might do that two or three times just to make sure that I'm smoothing it out, um, that I'm having easy connections between the notes. I don't have any notes that are super wonky. I'm just gonna try to make them all respond evenly. Once I get two or three that are working, then I go back up, but I start a half step lower. So I, I played a D flat scale glist descending, go back up to a C. Then B. Then B flat. And there might be a little bit of a lower lip roll out on those, but I don't worry about what I'm physically doing to make it happen. I'm focusing on the sound and I allow any micro adjustments that need to be made in the mouth to happen. And I go with the sound. Now I'm not telling you that you should never think about the processes, but I think that when you're in the heat of the moment and you're trying to play, if I have to think about where my teeth need to be and where my tongue needs to be and where my lips need to be and where my abdomen needs to be and where if I have all my change in my left pocket, my car keys in my right pocket, if all those conditions are met, then now I can play the note properly. I think that gets a little bit scary. It gets scary for me because I'm not all that smart and I want to simplify the process. So slide buzzing is a great, or slide tube buzzing is a great place to start. But sometimes it's not the best thing for a player to do. They need a different motivation. They need a different sort of stimulus. And that enters the Inspirex. Now it comes to you from wherever you order it with some instructions and this big, long, flexible tubing and a mouthpiece that sort of looks like something that might be on a bagpipe. All that stuff goes away. And so we're gonna use just the Inspirex as it comes, uh, the main body of the unit. Now this is an incentive spirometer and it was first used uh, in the respiratory therapy field to help people who are recovering from illness or surgery. The idea being that uh, the ball that exists in here, there's an incentive that, that, that is met as you, as you inhale, uh, the ball goes up, right? And so uh, since in some cases our wind hopefully is odor free and colorless, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's hard to measure sometimes. We need to see an item that it affects so that it can stimulate a part of the brain and help us sort of better understand where we are with our respiratory health. So at some point, musicians turned this thing upside down and it became an exhalating device. Um, 
short piece of half inch clear tubing from the hardware store, mouthpiece on the other end. And now we take that same D flat in the staff. And the goal is to make this ball jump to the top. Now, do you see how slow that ball moved to the top? That's typically what happens when people first come in and try this. It doesn't quite jump up right away. And if you've ever noticed, this particular register of the trombone tends to have the most sort of, I call it like the old country twang, uh, like Elvis almost, right? We want that pitch to be dead on, dead in the center. We want the wind to be moving at whatever the proper speed is to make that D flat sound great from the true onset of the note. From the moment that we turn that wind around from inhale to exhale and we activate the lips and we vibrate that column of air, I want, the, I want the wind to be moving at the proper speed, and this is a great way to see it. So we do it two or three, four times until we find that sweet spot. Now, obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a delay, but I want to minimize that delay. And I also want to make sure that as I'm doing this, that I'm not engaging any more muscle, muscle groups or using any more tension than absolutely necessary to make this thing happen. It's so easy to get really uh, physically engaged to make this happen. And I don't think that that's helpful either. And the reason that I don't think it's helpful is that when I'm playing super soft music or I have a super soft entrance, I don't want any extra tension in my body. Tension to me kills my sound and soft dynamics. And so I can go back to the trombone now. Some are better than others, but I think you get the idea. I want to do everything I can to make that note respond right when I want it to. And these are two ways, slide tube buzzing and the incentive spirometer that can help you get there. Hope this helps.